Welcome back, my furniture friends, to another episode of Salvaged by K. Scott. I think we have a true gem on our hands for this one. I scooped up this tiny handmade mid-century modern style coffee table from my Habitat for Humanity Restore for 15 whole dollars. And I'm gonna show you how I went about bringing it right back to life. To me, this definitely looks like a homemade piece of furniture. The top is a few pieces of solid teak nailed together, but it's got some standard maple hardware store taper legs that have a faux finish on them to try and match the wood on the top. It's pretty beat up with lots of scratches and gouges along the edges, and the original protective finish was starting to get flaky, but all in all, it should be a pretty straightforward fix up. I unscrewed the legs from their mounting brackets and then unscrewed the brackets from the tabletop. Another hint here for me that this was a homemade table was that all of the screws in these brackets were different. I think I ended up using about four different bits to get these things off. To remove the finish on the top, I decided to try this QCS finish remover. It's completely non-toxic and eco-friendly, so I was able to just spray this thing down on the driveway with no worry. I've tried this stuff on a few projects before without much luck, but I thought I'd give it another go on here. You just spray on a light layer over your surface, wait about 15 minutes, and then spray on another heavier layer wait another 15 minutes and then if it looks like it's breaking things up you can either start scraping or apply another layer and keep waiting. After my second application though it looked like something was happening so I grabbed a metal scraper and just a piece of recycling to collect all of the goop on and it actually came up really nicely. I brought it back into the garage, gave it another light spray and used some steel wool to scrub the rest of the finish out of all the little crevices and then just wiped everything down with some water. Now I could get a real feel for the damage on this thing. It definitely had some battle scars, some really deep scratches across the grain, and those can be hard to sand out without kind of creating a divot in the surface. So I grabbed my iron. Sometimes you can use the heat and steam from an iron to plump up those compressed wood fibers. If you use your iron on clothing though, I wouldn't use it for this, but this is my garage iron. I use it a lot to remove remove veneers and apply veneers. It's covered in burnt wood glue, so <laughs> it's definitely a garage tool and not an inside laundry thing. Once the iron got warmed up to the cotton setting, I laid a wet rag over the scratches and started steaming them. Just like with fabric though, you have to be careful not to leave it in one spot for too long or you could burn the wood. But I just spent about half an hour moving this cloth around and blasting the damage with the steam setting, trying to get those wood fibers to stand back up. Once I was confident that I had this as good as it was going to get, I set the top aside to dry and moved on to the legs. These look like they were painted white and then had some teak colored stain brushed over to match the wood grain on the top a little bit. I'm gonna do 
pretty much the same thing for my refinishing job, but I needed to get this stuff off first so that I had a nice fresh base to work with. And I just used some 120 grit sandpaper to grind this back to the bare maple. Since the brackets were looking pretty crusty, I popped them into a dish with some vinegar and set that aside to start eating away at the rest. Once the tabletop was good and dry, I was ready to start sanding it smooth and getting at all the stuff that the iron couldn't fix. Again, with some 120 grit sandpaper on my three x four rectangular sander to get nicely into those corners, I just slowly worked my way across the top and around the trim. Those scratches cleaned up so nicely. I could still see a slight mark across the grain and I had a few deeper holes to deal with too, but it was coming along. So I switched up to a slightly finer 180 grit for my final sand to refine things, get the top that much smoother and start closing up the wood grain a bit to get it ready for its new finish. Once I was finished all the sanding, I wiped everything down with a damp microfiber cloth to pick up all of the dust and also get a better look at what the wood grain would look like with a finish on it. This is a really good way to see if you've got any little sanding swirls to fix or if there are any spots that didn't get sanded evenly. I decided to add a little bit of wood filler into these two deeper holes that I couldn't sand out. I didn't have anything teak colored, but this light oak was close enough. For my new finish, I wanted to match what the table had originally looked like, and it was definitely stained. It's much darker than it would have been if it was just oiled like teak usually is. So I used the little panel on the bottom to test out what it looked like with just some teak oil and then a little patch of stain with oil over it. And I also stained a tiny bit of the leg to figure out how I was gonna go about matching those since they're two completely different types of wood. What I came up with was that I needed to stain the tabletop with some of this candlelit color. And then if I did probably two or three coats on the legs as well, that would get them close enough. So I propped the top up on some paint cans and got to staining. This is a gel stain, so it kind of sits more on the top of the wood instead of soaking deep down into the grain like a traditional stain. So I brushed that over the surface with a foam brush, working as quickly as I could so it didn't start drying up on me. See me put that brand new can of stain on the edge of the table? Yep, it fell. I cried a little, but <laughs> I had to go fast so I didn't get any weird stop and start marks, so yeah. Just keep going, Katie, just keep going. Once I had all of that stain on, I grabbed another clean rag and wiped it back and forth, going with the grain to push it down into the surface and remove all the excess. where I left that can. I almost did the same thing again. Brutal, Katie. Brutal. Okay, so for these legs, I propped them up in some wood clamps to hold them. A brilliant trick that I learned from Angie over at Transcend Furniture Gallery. And then I gave them a base coat of stain the exact same way.
You can really see the difference in the woods here. So once the base layer was dry on the legs, I did another layer a little bit heavier. And instead of wiping back all of the excess, I kind of just left it on there and wiped it up and down the length of the legs to create that really straight, tight wood grain look that the teak has. And while that was drying, I took the brackets inside to the utility sink and scrubbed them with some steel wool. So much better, but these will totally rust over again. So after I dried them off, I sprayed them all with this black rust inhibiting spray paint. Next, I needed to seal things up with a new protective layer. I could have used teak oil or tongue oil or an oil-based polyurethane, but it was so hot and humid in the garage that I opted for the fastest drying option that I had on hand, which was lacquer. I popped my respirator back on, and I feel like I need to note here that I also wore this while I was staining and spraying those brackets, and I had my dust mask on the whole time I was sanding too. It is so important to protect your lungs from all of this junk, but, I popped my spray can trigger handle onto this can just to make it a little bit easier to hold and spray and got two coats over the top and the legs. This is a flat sheen and the only reason I'm using it is because I bought it by accident and I need to use it on something. So it's kind of going to be a base layer or sealer coat on here. This stuff needs about 30 minutes to be able to sand or recoat. So after my second pass had dried, I rubbed it down with one of these new buffing pads from Surf Prep to smooth out any rough spots without removing any of the lacquer. And then I switched my can to a satin sheen of the exact same stuff and sprayed on another two coats of that. So four coats of lacquer in total with a nice soft satin sheen. The next morning, I flipped the top over and screwed the brackets back in place with some matching screws this time. And I dabbed on a little bit of that same black spray for no other reason than my own craziness. And then I screwed all the legs back in. One of these legs was missing its little adjustable foot and I couldn't find any replacements online. So I decided to just remove the other three. It sits really level without them. So it wasn't worth it to me to worry about finding another solution. And to bring these crusty caps back to life, since they weren't actual brass that I could polish up, I grabbed my Rub and Buff Metallic Wax in Antique Gold and a little artist brush and just painted a bit of that onto each foot. It definitely would have been easier to do this before I reinstalled the legs, but who cares? I got it done and I apologize. I could not get the camera to focus on these little feet to save my life. This is a self curing wax. So once it's dry on there, it won't move. It doesn't need any additional top coat. So let's take one more look at this mess of a table that I thrifted and what it looks like now. It's still not perfect, but it's got character and it's now in a condition that someone will want to use in their home again. I just love how this little table turned out. Thank you so much for watching along on this one today. I will leave a few more restoration type furniture makeovers here for you to watch next if you're interested. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and I will catch you all next time.